Crossroads of Albuquerque. I'm Pastor Tom Pennington, and it is a delight to be back in fellowship with you again. And I trust that you've had a great and glorious week searching the Word of God, learning about the Word of God, growing in Him, telling others about Jesus Christ, preparing yourself for revival. And that's what we've been talking about over the last few weeks and times together. It's about revival, preparing our hearts, our lives for revival. And what God's Word says we need to do to put things into practice. One of the greatest things that I find in the Word that, uh, that probably sometimes in our modern society frustrates people is what kind of people do we bring to the house of God during revival? You know, uh, sometimes we just like to he- keep the, the, uh, the, the atmosphere or the congregation how we like it and we want it to look a certain way. Well, uh, it, we want it to look spiff and polished, and 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 that's good to have those people there. But what about the others, you know, uh, that are out there in the world today, that need to hear the word of God? Are we reluctant to bring them in, or are we zealous like we are for everyone else who maybe who is more like us? Uh, one of the things that I think that we need to look at, and we're going to see that today, is what the scripture says concerning uh, about who we bring into the house of God. Remember, the house of God is not meant for the be there for the elite or just a chosen few. It's the house of God is to be open to all people of every race and ethnicity, every language and tongue. God wants people in his house to worship him. I think it should be the desire of every church, every pastor, to be multi-ethnic and have a multiple number of nations and diversities uh, in your congregation, people who love God. And I'm not talking about those of, you know, talking about diversity, I'm talking about uh, as far as those who may live in a sinful life, we don't want them to come and uh, and basically and say we're going to be a part of the church not change our lifestyle. We want people who come to the house of God who have been changed by the power of God and by the spirit of God and they're there because they want to worship God and they want to do what's right and uh, if we do have people that come into our church that are of different lifestyle and have different thoughts about how they should live according to the word of God, we need to love on them and we need to pray that God will show himself strong and reveal to them their sin and their need to turn from their sin and follow God wholeheartedly. That's what revival does. But the church door is never to be locked or we're never to exclude anybody from the house of God. Uh, where I'm located in Albuquerque, the, the congregation I pastor, uh, we have an opportunity to have homeless people that come in the, the church service on occasions. And we have, uh, sometimes we've had to put up with some uh, interruptions and we've had to take care of some situations. But, you know, we have some that have kept coming back and kept coming back. And, you know, and the more they come back, the more they hear the word, and the more we pray for them, the more we love on them, the more they change to become more like Christ. And so, just want to give you a word of, of hope on this. But let's look at the scripture about who we bring into the house of God. We're going to look at one scripture uh, first in Matthew chapter 22, verses 1 through 10. And so, let's take a time to read that verse of scripture. And Jesus answered and spoke to them, saying again, by parable, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son, and sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding, and they were not willing to come. Again, he sent out other servants, saying, Tell those who are invited, See, I have prepared in my dinner my oxen and fatted calf are kill, and all things are ready. Come to the wedding. But they made light of it and went their way, one to his own farm and another to his own business. And the rest seized his servants, treated them spitefully, and killed them. And when the king heard about it, he was furious, and he sent out his armies. He destroyed those murderers and burnt up their cities. 
Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Go, Therefore go into the highways, and as many, play, many as you find, invite to the wedding. So those servants went into the highways and, and gathered together all who were found, both good and bad, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. And so as we looked at this passage of Scripture, we see some questions here. And I want us to ask that question, you know, referring to who do we bring into the house of God? When we read these verses, what do you believe the Spirit of God is revealing uh, to us about the heart of God? You know, when we look at the passage of Scripture in its entirety, the, the first people that were invited were the nation of Israel. That's what, what it's referring to. They had the invitation by the prophets of the Old Testament to turn to God, to seek God, to honor God, to be part of what God wanted to do. Uh, but they refused to heed the call. They refused to take hold of the invitation. And they destroyed the prophets and they were, they were uh, killed. Many prophets were killed and lost everything. And God is saying, I want to judge those individuals. And then he told his servants there, uh, my, my wedding is still going to take place. I'm still wanting to uh, see things happen that are good for from, from my son because everything's ready. Go, into, go out there and bring people in. And so when we see this heart of God, we see one thing that it's huge, it's humongous, it's compassionate, it's loving, it's forgiving. And there's no uh, hatred of any way, shape, or form in the heart of God toward people. And those who love God must have that same heart. So as we say, oh, I love God with all my heart, and yet we refuse to have minister to people or have certain people come to our church or we quickly usher them out, then we're in dire need of saying, God, give us a heart of compassion because we're not having the heart of God if we do that. The scripture says in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So as we look at that passage of Scripture, we're seeing that God's desire and God's intent is that He wants everyone to have the opportunity to receive forgiveness of sins and turn from their sin, which is repentance, and follow after Him. Now, I'm not saying that we are to be inclusive where we said well no matter what lifestyle you live no matter what who you are in life you're never there's, there's no place called hell all is going to everyone's going to enter the heaven uh, kingdom of heaven that is not a true statement there is a place called hell and there's a place called heaven and the only way you can get to heaven is to repent of your sin and acknowledge Jesus Christ as savior and lord and honor the word of god if we refuse to do that then we're not in obedience to the word of god and we're in rebellion and rebellion is a sin. And that separates us from God. So we have a choice here. But that, that's for those who are hearing the, the message. But here's what I want you to understand. Who are we to bring into the house of God? Who are we to bring into the house of God? The, the, Matthew 22, where did the servants go to invite first? Well, they went to the nation of Israel. And Israel refused to go into the house of God. They refused to, to answer the invitation. And uh, they didn't know... Uh, they didn't want to receive the goodness of God. But where did the servants go? That's the question we went and want to ask next. After Israel rejected, where did the servants go? Well, the Bible says in verse uh, 9, go into the highways and as many as you find, invite. So you go into the highways. You know, you go out there where people are. People are traveling. People are out there on the road. People are out in the skirts of the city. And the servants went into the highways and the lanes, and uh, they invited people. What kind of people? Well, you know, that's, that's the question that most churches are asking. Well, who do we invite? You know, who, who is worthy to come to the house of God? Who is worthy to sit in the pew? Who is worthy to stand in the congregation? and to lift their hands and praise the Lord. Who is worth? Well, who is invited? Well, the scripture says they went and they found the good and the bad. Oh, man, I only want the good. Because good people, they're going to be good people. They're going to support. They're going to look good. They're going to do what's right. And the bad people, well, we've got to keep an eye on them. We've got to watch them. We're not sure if we actually want them among our congregation. 
You know, but the scripture says that the servants went out and invited the good and the bad. And guess who showed up? The good and the bad. In this invitation. And God's heart is for everyone because he's not willing that anyone should perish. And so when we look at the, the, this city, uh, at, at, this, uh, at this group of people that uh, the servants went out, we're faced with that same dilemma. There are people that are rejecting the invitation of the gospel. And we can sit back and feel sorry for ourselves. No one is showing up. No one is coming. But we need to see as God sees. And we need to begin to move as he moves and have a heart like he has. And that is to reach people. We're praying for a revival. We're praying for a demonstration and a move of God. So what do we need to do? We need to go and invite people. And the question I posed to my church some time ago, and I'll pose it to you today, who have you invited to church lately? Who have you invited to the, the knowledge of Christ lately? Are you just picking and choosing? Or are you taking every opportunity? If you're picking and choosing, then you're being discriminatory. And you're, 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 you're missing opportunity. I pray every day, God, this is my wife and I, we pray this every day. God, give us an opportunity, a divine appointment to minister to someone today. And when we have that opportunity to speak to people, I make an, an effort to find out where they are. Are you attending church? Do you know anything about the Lord? I want to make sure where they're at. I want to find out and invite them to the knowledge of Christ and invite them to place of worship where we can grow together in the things of the Lord. And so we, we need to invite the good and the bad. And in the, how, the hall, the Bible says, the hall was filled. And so we see that taking place. The hall was filled. What do you got to do to fill a hall? Invite people. How do you fill your church? You invite people. And someone says, and I've heard this before, that others, and, and, and I've heard it said, and I've heard someone recently say, oh, it's only the pastor's responsibility to invite people. It's only the, the deacons or the board members or Sunday school teacher. Only those in position can invite people. They, they have the influence. They have the authority. You know, we can make whatever excuse. Beloved, listen to me today. You are a child of God. God has called you to be his child. He put your name in his book. And if he put your name in the book, he's expecting you to invite somebody to know him so they can have their name put in the book of life. You are to be a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. To use the excuse that it's somebody else's responsibility is a lame one. It's not a good one. You need to take responsibility and invite people to Jesus Christ. You need to take the responsibility and the opportunity to invite people into the fellowship where you attend. That's so important. You know, the church is not going to grow unless you begin to do your part. The Bible says that they who labor, labor in vain. If God is not with them, if they're doing it in a wrong motive, wrong desire, it, no matter how much you do, no matter how many programs you have or what activities you have, it doesn't, those are not going to bring people to the church or to Christ. They need an invitation. You be the invitator. You give them the invite. You give them the opportunity to come to know Jesus Christ. And God will richly bless you for that because that's important. Now I want you to turn over to Luke's Gospel, chapter 14, and I want you to read a passage of Scripture with me. I hope you have your Bibles open. You know, as always, we want you to have your Bibles open at all times. Because we're going to go back and forth from scripture to scripture. And there may be a scripture that you need to underline or to take hold of. And, uh, or you just might want to write, write a note about it. But look at Luke chapter 14. And let's look at verses 15 to 24. Now this is a, just a small passage of scripture. It's going to be very similar to what we read in Matthew. And here's what it says. Now when one of those who had sat at the table with him heard these things, he says, Blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. And then he said to him, A certain man gave a great supper and invited many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. And that grants a great invitation. But when they, with one accord, began to make excuses, the first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground. I must go and see it. I ask you to excuse me. Another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I'm, I, go, I am going to test them. I have asked to be excused. Still another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. 
So the servant came and reported these things to his master. And then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city and bring in here the poor, the maimed, and the lame, and the blind. And the servant said, Master, it is done as you commanded. And still there is room. Hallelujah. Then the master said to the servant, Go out of the highways and hedges and compel them to bring them into my house that it may be full. Now, for I say to you that none of these who were invited shall taste of my supper. Now, when I look at this passage of Scripture and add it with the one we read in Matthew, it makes even the picture bigger than what, we're at, what we said earlier. First, it dealt with the nation of Israel and then a small parameter outside of that. And here in this passage of Scripture, we find that the, the, the man, had the, the, the great house, had, a, had supper ready, and he said, the time is ready for supper. It's time to eat. It's time to enjoy. And he, he went out and invited. But verses 18 through 20, all you find there is excuse after excuse after excuse. You know, people can get upset about whatever. And they can get in, you know, uh, frustrated or angry at the pastor or the leadership of the church. And they can make whatever excuse not to do something when God calls the church to do something. You know, oh, I'm, I'm, I got this. I've been offended. I've been hurt. But, you know, that's not a good excuse. You have an obligation. See, your primary obligation as a child of God is to God himself. It's not, to, it's not directly to your pastor or the leadership of your church. It's to God. You're going to have to answer to God for the very actions that you are portraying in the words that you say. And the excuses mean nothing to God. God knows all things. And when you make the excuse, He knows what's in your heart. And so, as we look at this passage of Scripture, where did He tell the servant to go after there was rejection? He says, you go into... Uh, to the streets and the lanes of the city. You know, that talks about the metroplex of, of, of the city where we live. You know, whether it be Albuquerque or Santa Fe or wherever you're viewing this program or hearing it, or wherever you live, there's cities that have major fairways. We need to go out into the streets. We need to go out to where people are. You know, I have found out as a pastor, people do not just come to the church by chance. You have to go out and invite them somebody says that means work well what do you think it's all about it's about working winning souls it's about bringing people to Christ that's what it's all about Jesus said in John chapter 4 do not say that four months and the harvest is ready he says look now the harvest is white and ready for harvesting so right now is the opportunity I remember pastoring uh, on various occasions in California and North Hollywood uh, I had a, a cross that stood about six foot high it was on a stand, and I would take it out. I'd get my Bible. I'd get a, I had a magnaphone and a, a portable speaker with a microphone on it. And uh, I would go a couple blocks up to a major intersection real close to the church. And I get my, I put my cross down there, and I'd turn my PA system on, and i begin to preach. And I begin to talk to people about Jesus Christ. I passed out tracts as they went by. I preached the word. I hold my Bible in my hand. I give them a plan of salvation. And, and people received. Some rejected. But you know, it was a good time. Was it work? Yes, it was. Was it enjoyable? Yes. Was I scared at times? You bet I was. There were times, uh, I know when, uh, where I was located on one particular corner. There was a car wash right across the street from where I was. And there was a man, like a, in, in, as I was preaching the word of God, he'd come to the corner and he'd shake his hand and he'd say something. And, and, and I can't tell you what he said because it's not appropriate. But I can tell you one thing. He was having a fit and he walked back and forth and he would cuss me out and he would shake his finger. And, you know, like that raging, roaring lion going back and forth. But I kept preaching the word. You know, and that's what it's all about. It's inviting people to the Lord Jesus Christ. You go in the highways and the byways, in the lanes and, and the hedges of the city. You know, you got to go where people are. you got to go where the, the outcasts are. You know, the, the church is not made for always for the, 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 those who are dressed nice and those who are all just in color or whatever. You know, it's for every type of people. Every class of people. The church is made for the, the drug addict, the prostitute, the gangster, the gangbanger, whatever, 
it's meant for the businessman, the blue collar, the white collar. It, you know, wherever status of life you're, you're, you're in, the church is meant for you. That's the house of God. And that's who we're to bring in. We're not to pick and choose who we bring in. We're to bring in people for the kingdom of God. I remember a missionary one time telling me a story during a service, and he was sharing this story. And the story was like this. There was a missionary, and he, he thought, you know, I, I got to stay in the city, and I got to preach the gospel there. But he felt little of the Holy Spirit to go out into a very uninhabited place. And he was traveling around the road, and the Holy Spirit said, Stop. I want you to get out there, and I want you to go to where this hedge of trees are, and I want you to preach the gospel. And so he, he stopped, and he went out there, and he preached the gospel. And he's thinking to himself, he said, man, there's nobody out here. I'm out in the boondocks. There's no one that lives out here. How can, but I'm, how can this be? But I'm going to obey the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit says for me to stop and to preach the gospel. So he preached the gospel, and he gave an invitation. Just like he was in a church service or on a street corner, wherever. And as he gave the invitation, all of a sudden, there were some bushmen that came out of the out of the bush. There was one over here to the side, and another one came out. The, like four or five bushmen came out, and they received Jesus Christ because they heard the message of the gospel. So to say, well, I can only go certain places is a is a myth or a hogwash, a fairy tale. You can go anywhere. That the Holy Spirit leads you and you can proclaim the message and God will give the results. Remember this too, when you're out witnessing or when you're bringing people to Christ, the results is not yours, it's God's. The results are God's responsibility. So, they went out to the highways, the byways, the hedges, they went everywhere. Who did they bring in? The Bible says they brought in the poor, the maimed, the lame, and the blind. Poor don't have any money. A lot of people don't want poor people in their church. I love poor people. Why? Because I see how God changes their life. I see how God raises them up and elevates them. I, I, some people, I don't want disability people in my church. It's a big responsibility. Hey, I like to have them there so they can hear the word, so their faith can grow. And when the time comes, God can raise them up out of their bed of affliction and out of their disability. You know, God wants people in his church. And, you know, he doesn't care what status they're in. He doesn't care what situation they're in or what, how difficult their life is or how, how maybe disabled they are. You know, God loves people. Say it with me. God loves people. He wants all types of people to be in his house. Poor, maimed, and lame, and blind. And he wants them to come into the house. So he brought them to the house. And the, the servant said, well, they're all there. Uh, the, house is, the, the house is still has room. And he says, go out and bring more and compel them. Now, let's look at the word that compel. The word compel means to drive, to urge forcefully, irresistibly, to cause, to do, or to occur by overwhelming pressure, to drive together. In other words, the servant went out there and he says, he grabbed them and he says, come on. The house has got a wedding party going. The supper is ready. Everything's ready. You don't have to do anything but come and show up. Isn't that great? Go and invite people. The supper is ready. You don't have to do anything but come. Give them the invitation. And God is going to, to do the work in their life. These people came from all areas of the city. It didn't make any difference where they were at. The, name, the lame, the poor, the main, the blind, the good, the bad, whatever they were, whoever they were, they came to the house of God. And that's exactly what we need to do today. And who do we bring to the house of God? All types of people. Here's a list. I'm going to give you a short list. list of about 10 different groups of people and some scripture references. We don't have time to read them all, but I want you to mark them down. And I want you to go back over. Here's what it says. The first one, we bring in the sick. We bring in those who are sick and afflicted. You know, the, the, I had a, a bishop, Oscar Moore, of the Pentecostalist church back in the 40s and 50s and early 60s. He wrote a book, and he says, the church is not a resort for saints. It is a hospital for sinners. The church is to be a hospital to bring healing to those who are sick and afflicted, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. We are to minister to the whole person, so we bring the sick in. And that's in Matthew, 20, uh, Matthew 4, 24. And we find that we are to bring the demon-possessed. Yes, the demon-possessed. Those who are oppressed and are possessed by the devil. We need to bring them in. Why? Because they need that deliverance in their life. 
Hallelujah. Read the account. God wasn't afraid. Jesus wasn't afraid. He said, come on, I'll deliver you. And guess what? He found deliverance. And when those who were afraid of him saw him after Jesus got through with him, they found that he was in his right mind and he was clothed. God changes people by the power of his spirit. Who else we bring in? We bring in those whom the church fails to help. What the religious order could not do, we bring those to Christ and Christ can help them. Christ helps those who cannot help themselves. According to Luke's gospel, we bring in the helpless. There's a lot of helpless people out there. As a pastor, I run across several on a, on a regular basis, on a weekly basis, where they just seem so helpless, they can't do for themselves. And we need to be able to help those who cannot help themselves. Luke 18 says we are to bring the blind, that they can only not only receive physical sight, but also spiritual sight. We're to bring the seekers in, those who are seeking for truth, seeking for reality, seeking for a relationship with God. We need to bring, those are the kind of people that we need to bring in. We need to bring in the doubters. Thomas said, you know, he says, I got to see it to believe it. And there are a lot of people that say the same thing. I got to see this wonderful thing of God. I got to see it to believe it. Well, bring them in. Bring them in. Andrew, when he was talking to his brother, uh, Peter, you know, um, uh, he was saying, come and see. Come and see. Just bring them in. We bring in the sinful. In John chapter 8, verse 3, the adulterous woman. There's a lot of people who have made a lot of mistakes out there. You know who they are. You see them. You've talked to some of them. You know what they've been through. They're hurting. They're bound by sin. And just like this adulterous woman in chapter 8 of John, she found forgiveness at the feet of Jesus. And Jesus said, go and sin no more. We bring in the mourners in John chapter 11, those who are sorrowful, those who have lost loved ones. And we bring in children. Yes, children. We bring in all ages of people, all types of people, all colors of people, all languages of people to the house of God. You say, well, I don't understand them. I can't speak their language. They don't, they don't look like I do. Or We have different cultures. It doesn't make any difference, beloved. Bring them to your church. Bring them to Christ. That's the important thing. Think about the eternity. Don't think about the present. Think about the eternity of these people. Time may be limited for those unreached by the gospel and for us to tell them about Jesus, God's love, and forgiveness. Time is running out. Things are happening on world events that are just moving so quickly. And the Lord could come at any time, church. And we need to take heed to what the Word of God says in John chapter 9, verse 3. I must work the works of Him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no man can work. And so, when we look at this passage of Scripture, and we realize that the coming of the Lord is soon, we need to be ready to tell somebody about Jesus Christ. Tell, tell someone today. Take the opportunity this week to invite someone to your church. Go after them. Compel them. Say, come on, i got something good to share with you, and it's Jesus Christ. Come to church with me, and together we can grow in the grace of God. Father, bless your people. Give them a boldness to stand and to witness and to bring people to a great knowledge of Jesus Christ for your glory. Amen. Well, I look forward to seeing you at the same time next week. May God richly bless you. Keep your word open. Keep studying and grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. May God bless you abundantly in the days to come. Amen.